violent explosion of seed pods is one of the fastest movements in the plant kingdom. How does this explosive mechanism work? What is its cellular basis? These are some of the questions that we addressed in a recent cell paper. In the Department of Comparative Development and Genetics, we've spent the past 10 years developing the small mustard weed, Cardamony hirsuta, into a great experimental system. Now this small plant is commonly called popping cress for the explosive shatter of its fruit pods. This process is rapid, taking less than 3 milliseconds. It launches the seeds into the sky like a fireworks display spreading new plants everywhere. Cardamony hirsuta is related to the model plant Arabidopsis thaliana and the fruits of these two species look very similar. So we took advantage of this close relationship between these two plants, one explosive, the other non-explosive, to ask what were the novelties that evolved in cardamony to allow explosive seed dispersal. The cardamony fruit has more lignin now lignin is a stiff polymer found in wood. The lignin is deposited asymmetrically in a single cell layer of the fruit valve called the endocarp B and forms a unique hinge shape. The cardamony fruit valve is under tension while it's held flat before explosion. This tension is caused by differential contraction of the soft and stiff tissue layers of the fruit valve. When the tension is released, the valve curls. But what we really needed to understand was how does it curl explosively. Now because the fruit valve is curved due to growth of the seeds, the geometry is somewhat similar to this. So this is a trouser clip for cycling or what we called a slap bracelet when I was a kid. So it's a simple structure that wants to be coiled along its length, but when you flatten it, it has a curved cross section that keeps it flat. So it's sort of as if the energy that could be released in coiling is trapped so long as the cross-section is curved. This is where the endocarp cell geometry comes in. In cardominae, the stiff lignin in the endocarp cells has the shape of a hinge. So what this hinge does is it enables the cross-section to easily flatten by the hinge simply opening. Because of this hinge geometry, the valve is actually a bit more like this party favor. So this also wants to be coiled along its length, but it can freely curve and uncurve in the cross-section. So, the valve builds up its energy, the hinge opens, and the valve flattens the cross-section, and voila, the valve explosively coils. Where does this energy come from? How does the other tissue of the valve contract? Through osmosis, a cell increases its internal pressure. This tug of pressure pushes the cell walls outward. It also follows that the cell will deflate when it loses pressure. When plant tissues dry, they contract by loss of turgor pressure, but cardamine fruits explode while green and turgid, not dry. So, how does it work? How can cell contract by expansion? We could reproduce this behavior by implementing two key parameters in our model, cell shape and anisotropy. The flat, square shape of these cells causes the wall to bulge out, expanding the depth and contracting the length just like an air mattress. Most cells are anisotropic. They resist extension differently in different directions. In that case, an increase in turgor pressure can lead to an expansion in one direction and a contraction in another direction. An example of this is seen in a McKibben actuator. The actuator is an elastic tube reinforced by a double helical mesh. When the internal pressure is increased, the radius of the cylinder increases, but its length decreases. Therefore, the cylinder contracts under increased pressure. In this simulation, we see clearly that an increase in turgor pressure leads to both expansion in one direction, but contraction in the transverse directions. How do we know that the force generated by the shrinkage of the cells is enough to explain the curvature of the whole valve? So to answer this question, we measure the force needed to extend the valve from curved to flat. And we found that the force we measured matched well the force predicted by our models. So taken all together, our results show for the first time in plant cells that trigger pressure can lead to contractions of the cells which in turn drive a rapid, rapid movement of the entire organ. 
So we showed an equivalent of muscles in plants. Our study demonstrates the strength of using a good genetic system and combining this with theoretical models at different spatial scales. It also demonstrates the strength of bringing together researchers from different disciplines. And in this way, we obtained an integrative and comprehensive understanding of explosive seed dispersal.